Well, very good morning to you if you are in the Caribbean or the Americas. Uh, good afternoon if you're in Europe or the Middle East. And very good evening to you in the Asia Pacific region. Welcome to today's Crossing Borders broadcast, the IMC streaming service uh, created to keep investment migration professionals connected and informed. Today's broadcast is brought to you in association with the Investments Migration Yearbook which I'm holding a copy of here. Uh, and that's available for download in the handouts section in the bottom right of your screens. If you haven't seen one of these broadcasts yet, uh, don't worry, you can catch up through our YouTube channel uh, and don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe for updates. Um, if you attended our forum in Brussels, uh, earlier this month, uh, and you're looking to see um, if you've been photographed, um, as we had uh, a couple of photographers for the uh, three days, uh, go to our Facebook page, uh, Investment Migration Council, uh, and you'll see we've uploaded uh, hundreds of photos from the event, so feel free to share those and download. So back to today's webinar. Uh, remember that you can ask questions to myself and uh, today's guest using the widget on the right of your screen, where, as I mentioned before, you'll also find uh, some useful handouts. If I look at that now, uh, there's, of course, a copy of the yearbook. There's some information about I, um, our uh, education and training division, and there's a presentation on the Investment Migration Council. So to keep you all engaged, we'll have some uh, polling uh, to move the conversation along. Uh, for those of you that know me, uh, you'll know that I like to uh, make these sessions uh, as interactive as possible. Uh, so it's great to, to have some questions uh, and the comments that uh, you might wish to make. Feel free to share them uh, through the widgets. So we'll start with a poll um, as usual, and we're really keen to know uh, where you guys are from today. So I'm going to launch that onto your screens. So please select one option. I will give you a few more seconds to answer. All right, everyone's voted, so I'm going to close the poll. Uh, and I should be able to share the results of that. Uh, and that's interesting for us all uh, to know. So where are you guys from today? 22% uh, 20 of you are from the Asia Pacific region, uh, but actually Europe and Africa, 67% of you, uh, and 11% from the Americas. So that's interesting uh, and really good for us to, to know. Let me introduce today's speaker. So I'm delighted uh, to have uh, with me today uh, Frederico uh, Seixas uh, from Investorum. Uh, Frederico is the Sales and Marketing Director uh, at Investorum. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, you are based in Porto, Frederico. Welcome to uh, Crossing Borders. Thank you so much, Bruno, for your invitation. Actually, I'm not in Porto, I'm in Lisbon. We do have offices in Porto and Lisbon, uh, but I am currently in Lisbon. Uh, thank you again for this invitation. It's always a pleasure to be part of the IMC world and to be a proud member since the inception. <laughs> It is, it is. As you guys have been um, quite involved yes. with us. Look, Fre Frederico, um, we, we invited you along because Portugal um, is, you know, is often or has been in the past um, a, a jurisdiction, a destination for global residents, uh, which is perhaps not as well known uh, as some of the other uh, global residence uh, programs uh, that have been around. And you contributed uh, an interesting article in um, in the, our uh, 
recent yearbook, the 2021-2022 uh, edition, uh, and I noticed there was uh, quite a lot of interest in our uh, forum in Brussels uh, a couple of weeks ago. We had a large delegation from uh, from Portugal. Um, so, you know, I want to probably do another poll and, and see how this conversation uh, evolves. Um, and I want to ask our um, our, uh, our, our viewers is sort of <clears throat> how much do they know um, about Portugal? So the question we're asking is what is the lowest investment threshold uh, that you need um, to enter the Portuguese uh, program? So it's over to you delegates. I'll give you a few more seconds. We're at 75% of viewers have voted, 80%, 85%. So I'm going to close that and share the results uh, on screen. So 100% said 280. Is that the right answer? In fact, it is when we're talking about real estate, there is a 200K option, but it's a contribution to cultural heritage. Yes, the, the answer is correct. 280K is the lowest uh, real estate investment threshold. So yes, right. it is correct. Very well done. Everybody is very knowledgeable. Great. So in, in terms of Portugal, why do you believe um, that it's the best kept secret, as you've mentioned uh, a few times? Uh, and wrote about? Well, basically, I think that Portugal, uh, many years ago, before the before 2012 and before the GRP program was launched, was a very underrated program, uh, underrated country. Very few people knew about it. I recall many friends of mine coming to Portugal from different parts of the world, from US, etc., and they would say, this is an amazing country and uh, nobody knows about it. This is really the best kept secret. And uh, in reality, today, a few years later, 10 years later, uh, Portugal has been a tremendous success. Why has it been a tremendous success? I think in reality, Portugal has always been a fantastic country, but nobody talked about it nobody the portuguese were never too keen about explaining or talking about their country they although they're very patriotic they're very secretive the portuguese culture is very secretive very jewish like we don't like to talk if we're well or if we are unwell and we're very always very discreet today with uh, all the world travel awards with the tourism and portugal has been uh, leading the best touristic destinations for three years in a row, uh, the Azores, which are the islands, the Portuguese islands in the middle of the Atlantic, that were unknown, were classified by National Geographic as the best preserved islands in the world. Uh, it's four and a half hours away from New York. Americans are discovering it. Uh, all of the world golf awards, the wine tourism in Portugal. Very few people know that, for example, Portugal has 500 different wine casts but the productions are sometimes so small that all of it is consumed in portugal so we do not have enough economic scales to export our wines so the portuguese wines although uh, considered the best of the world or maybe in many cases i have a, a, a very a very knowledgeable friend of mine that has been working in wines all his life and he's not Portuguese, he's actually American, he works in Napa Valley, and he says that uh, the Portuguese wines below 50 euros are the best price quality wines in the world. I mean, they cannot compare it to, of course, when you go above 50 euros, uh, giving us an example, there, there's the French wines which are uh, unbeatable. But I think that Portugal has been doing a tremendous job in the tourism industry, in the economy, the economic strategies that have been developed in the in the last years have been extremely important for Portugal. Remind you that, for example, in uh, uh, the innovation and in the web strategies, we have been selected and we host the Web Summit, which is the most important event in the world, and Portugal has been hosting it for the last uh, for the last years. 
the economic growth of Portugal has been in recent years above European average, which is uh, fantastic. We have more and more a knowledge-based economy. Uh, of course, we have a unique connection to all the Portuguese-speaking countries, which is a great connection not only to Africa, but to South America. Uh, remembering that uh, the second country that has mostly invested in the GRP is Brazil, which is a 200 million economy and very important to us. Um, also, Portugal has been very keen in, uh, in, in the startup industries and in the technology industry, which has been uh, very, very important in the digital transitions and in developing technologies. So, this has also been very impactful for Portugal. Also, renewable energies. Portugal has been playing a fantastic role worldwide and in Europe. We are today leaders in uh, energy transition and we'll probably be the first one to uh, reach carbon neutrality, which Europe wants us to reach it by 250, and probably Portugal will reach it before 250. So, of course, the factors, the main factors for the success of the Portugal GRP have to do with geolocation of Portugal in Europe, very close to Africa, very close to South America, very close to North America, safety. Portugal, uh, as the majority now, have been, is considered the fourth safest country in the world. Uh, this is extremely important. Uh, the healthcare system in Portugal, public and private, is fantastic and uh, it's for free. So when you go into the public system in Portugal, there's no cost whatsoever, which is also uh, uh, very, very attractive. Of course, the cost of living in Portugal is uh, unbeatable standards of living is very good it's a very international country we've always i mean there's a very interesting book written by a, actually an english journalist that moved to portugal and he uh, the name of this book is portugal the first global village and we, in reality we've been uh, going around the world for the last 500 years at least so we know uh, how to deal with different cultures we love dealing with different cultures Portugal is a country that accepts people from all over the world. We do speak a lot of languages, which is also very helpful, so foreigners feel at home. Uh, remember that before the GRP, we had the, probably the biggest uh, expat communities of English, in the, mainly in the Algarve region, but also in Lisbon, Cascais, and in the West. So English yeah. love Portugal, and they've always considered Portugal to be the Florida of Europe. Right, so I, I want to move on to the GRP a little bit uh, because it it has been you know incredibly successful. Before we do that, though, um, just one of the, a couple of things I picked up on is um, you, uh, flights from New York. It's just four and a half hours to Lisbon. Is that right? No, to the Azores, to the Portuguese islands, not to Lisbon. To the Portuguese right. islands, to the Azores. To the Azores. Fact, All right. There's a fantastic flight from uh, United that uh, you can you can stop in in the Azores, stay for a night or two, and then come to Portugal, which is another two and a half hours. So no, right. from New York to Lisbon, it's uh, seven hours, if I'm not mistaken. Seven hours, all right. It's about the same as London, right? And then talking about healthcare, of course, we're just coming out of a pandemic now, um, and you mentioned that healthcare, both in a private and um, national uh, healthcare provided by the government. Um, is of very good quality. I don't question that. Um, is that free for uh, residents that uh, are involved in uh, investment migration programs, or do they need separate healthcare insurance, as is in the case in uh, Malta, for example? Now, in Portugal, they are entitled, and once they become residents, they will have uh, free health services as the Portuguese. Same, same. Even actually in Portugal, when you're a foreigner, even if you're spending vacation here and you go to a public hospital, they'll take care of you. All right, terrific. Um, I want to move on to the the GRP, but before we do that, I want to launch another poll, and then we've also got a question that's come in from Gurisman Singh uh, in India. So let me launch the poll, and that's my third poll. Um, and again, you know, we want to get that interactivity and we're asking you, today's viewers, 
Um, do you know what the minimal uh, annual requirement stay in Portugal is uh, under the GRP? So get clicking, please vote. Three options. Um, is it seven days, 10 days, or 14 days? What is the minimum annual requirement stay in Portugal under the GRP? All right, so let's get that closed. Let's publish uh, our results. 75% of the viewers think seven days and 25% think it's 14 days. Nobody opted for 10 days. Frederico. Well, actually the correct answer is seven days, although you could go for the 14 days, but then it wouldn't be annual. It would be every two years you have the option of not coming to Portugal every year and you may only come to Portugal every two years and you can and then the minimum stay is 14 days but the correct answer yearly is seven days hmm. that's interesting so there's a bit of a uh, so a couple of options there for people um and as you mentioned already i mean what a great destination for tourism got some beautiful golf courses um on the algarve i've uh, been to those uh, myself when i was uh, uh, younger with my parents um and presumably you know more and more tourism has evolved so i think 14 days every two years is uh, is uh, is really good and you can enjoy a terrific uh, holiday so let's hide that and um sticking with the, the grp what do you think um the key ingredients for the portuguese grp um have been for it to be so successful well bruno going back i mean uh, as i mentioned i think that the key factors have been uh, Portuguese location, Portuguese safety, healthcare, education in Portugal, very, very important. And education is very good, both, both public and private, uh, not only on the high schools, the schools, but also the universities. Actually, four universities in Portugal were ranked by Financial Times as the top 50 universities in the world. So we're seeing more and more foreigners coming to Portugal and studying in the coastline and surfing on their time off, but they have fantastic universities which are linked to MIT, to Harvard, etc. We're actually seeing a lot of Americans coming over in, in, in the last, uh, last uh, years, and uh, they're changing California, they're changing uh, the East Coast for Portugal, and uh, it's amazing to see, and a lot of English too, and Germans, etc. This uh, uh, international schools is really a key factor when you are thinking of getting in another residence or citizenship many of the cases it's a plan b and for example the brazilian when he looks to portugal and then he thinks of the options that he has in brazil or the us the the difference in cost is uh, outrageous because in portugal if you are a very good student and you go to a portuguese public university the fees are extremely low we're talking of uh, 1500 euros per year versus 20 or 30 in the us uh, so many of them come to portugal because of this factor of course safety is always extremely important and once again if you're a brazilian or if you're an african thinking of sending your kids to a city like rio or sao paulo where the majority of the universities are they're very unsafe cities so they'll rather send them to Portugal, to Coimbra, to Porto, or to Lisbon, where they are very safe. Uh, of course, the, the Portuguese passport is an excellent passport. It's the fifth, sixth most powerful passport in the world. All right. Just before we come to the passport rankings, we've got a question that's come in from Gorezman Singh. Um, you mentioned about schooling. Uh, mm -hmm. Do children get free education same like local children or is there a fee applicable to international uh, students um, and also uh, is it only applicable to schools um, uh, but is it also applicable to university 
it's exactly the same as a local. He will pay exactly the same fees as long as he's a resident in Portugal, he will have the same benefits as the Portuguese, both in education and in health. Fantastic. And at schools and university uh, also. And university, right. yes. Mo moving on to one of the key points is the passport rankings, right? And how does Portugal fare in this? Um, in, in this? Well, basically, Portugal today has been placed in fourth, fifth, and sixth in passport rankings in the Henley and Partners uh, Index, which is extremely good. And uh, uh, many times we're not ranking even better because of the uh, we have a lot of ex-colonies and we have all of these people from these ex-colonies that would wish to come to Portugal without a visa. And because we don't give them, allow them to come to Portugal without a visa, we also need to get a visa to go to their countries. And uh, because of this, we love, we, 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 we we go down a few points, but the Portuguese passport is a fantastic passport. And Portugal itself, more and more, is also seen as a country that has a very sustainable living, the quality of the food in Portugal versus other places in the world, like, sorry to say, US. Uh, it's real food. It's not plastic food. I mean, you eat a lettuce in Portugal. It's fantastic. And uh, I remember that uh, Philip Stark, I mean, he's French and he you know, very good fish in France, but he moved to Portugal, has houses in Portugal, and he said, I hadn't really tasted the fish until I've tasted the fish in Portugal. I mean, this is something surreal. It has nothing to do with the flavors that, we, that I was used to. And many people, when they come to visit Portugal, like, for example, the Alentejo region, which is a beautiful region where we actually have two beautiful projects, two convents, is a region that is it, it, a trip to the past in, in, in the good sense. You still have the true bread, the real bread, which is handmade and uh, with the real ingredients like it was done 100 years ago. It's still made the same way, the same as the wine, the same as the olive oils. When you go to these regions, for example, if you come with a chicken that you bought in the supermarket, they won't eat it. It's right. plastic for them. They, all, they, they have their own. Uh, Portugal is extremely sustainable, and this is what people love, because in reality today, people want authenticity, and Portugal is all about authenticity. Right. So with the GRB, you mentioned you've got some projects. Um, talk mm -hmm. to us a little bit about those. What are the options? Where are these projects? What are the price points? Who are they attracting? Okay, basically in Vestaran we have projects from north to south of Portugal. So we have projects in Oporto, in Lisbon, in Cascais, north of Oporto, in the Douro Valley, in the Alentejo region, and in the Algarve. So several different options. Today we have sold out the majority of our projects and we're now launching another project in Alentejo where we have different options between what we call the buyback units and the freehold units. The starting point is the 280k which is what we call the buyback guaranteed meaning that what, whatever you invest you, you will receive it back when you achieve your permanent residence or your citizenship or if you prefer and you go to a freehold unit, we also have that uh, available starting at 300,000. So two options, 280, 300,000, the freehold options go up to 395, depending on the areas. And we're talking of enclosed five-star resorts with uh, very important hotel management companies behind them. In uh, the case of Alentejo, the first hotel, will be managed by Anantara, which is part of the minor group. And the second will be managed by Tivoli, which is also part of minor group, which is the best Portuguese brand that has been uh, around for many, many years and was acquired by minor group a few years ago. So just to remember the minor group also bought an Ache in Spain, one of the best Spanish brands, and they're doing extremely uh, well in all over the world. But today, uh, it's one of the most recognized brands. So basically, the threshold of our projects in the interior is still 280, starting at 280, going to three to 395, 
just to rem remind you that today the prices in the coastline majority are above 500,000. So this is an interesting and very appealing uh, projects that we have. All right, interesting. Um, before moving on, we've had um, a little bit of um, different pieces of news coming out from, uh, from Portugal uh, on the political front. Um, you know, we, what is the situation in terms of domestic politics? Is the program here uh, to stay um, at the moment? Um, or is it a case of we don't know in the next year or two what is happening? I think the viewers would be interested to know before they proceed for themselves uh, or in advising their clients on Portugal. They need to know that it is a safe uh, harbour and the government is supportive of investment migration pathways. Well, basically the programme has been uh, very active for the last 10 years. We had very recently a, a let's say a the left wing in Portugal, which is very small, trying to always uh, the, the problem is always the same: the lack of knowledge. They do not understand, and they always believe that the the investment migration industry is people buying passports and uh, not contributing to the Portuguese economy. And they always think of people that have uh, money hidden from somewhere, or they're Russian oligarchs, or they're uh, whatever, and uh, uh, this is not the reality. But in the recent past, I mean, we have today a very stable government in Portugal with the majority of parliament, which has been appointed very recently. So we'll have four years of stability for sure. And in the very recent past, I mean, this left wing tried to vote a law in, the, in, in parliament against the GRP, and it was rejected by 85% of the parliament. So, I mean, the GRP is here to stay in, extremely healthy. We did have now an, an interruption at CEF of the processes for, uh, since January, but that is resolved also, has been so resolved. So what is CEF? For our viewers, please, Frederico, just explain what the CEF is. Sorry, CEF is the Immigration Department in Portugal, okay, Serviço de Imigração and Fronteiras. And basically, uh, they have been restructuring themselves. And because we had uh, uh, the new government coming in, and they were prioritizing with uh, the budget, state budget, etc., they have now they're re doing a reformulation of the whole immigration department. Also, because of the demand and the growing of this industry, they want to change software, become become more efficient. We're also having having problems in the borders due to, to the huge flow of tourism coming to Portugal more and more. This is going to be a record year again in Portugal due to the war. So people are getting away from other destinations like Turkey, for example, and they're coming to Portugal. So I'm glad to say that today Portugal is healthy, very stable. And I truly believe that the GRP is in Portugal and it will be and it will remain for, for many years, hopefully. Uh, I think the decisions of the that were made last year to try and move a little bit of the investment to the interior of the country makes sense and is working well. And developers like ourselves are moving to the interior of the country and helping develop this beautiful country. Right. Is that something you're 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 seeing a trend uh, away from the big cities of Lisbon, Porto, and you know some of the more southern cities as well? as people look uh, more inland, perhaps, into more cute or sort of secluded village towns? I think it's a major trend, and I think that the COVID helped us uh, discover that we do not need to live in big cities like Lisbon or Porto. We can live elsewhere, we can live in the interior, and we can work remotely and just go into the city for one or two days. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of Portuguese moving inland, um, and uh, bringing the kids, studying their excellent schools and universities in the interior of Portugal. And Portugal is a small country, as you know, so you're never too far away from either Porto or Lisbon or Faro, where you have the three international airports. There's also the new airport in Alentejo, Beja, which is also picking up and very close to our projects. So in reality, 
even when we you move inland, you're never more than an hour and a half away from the coast. So, and the infrastructures and highways in Portugal are excellent. And uh, you really have uh, hospitals, you have everything you need today in the interior as in the coastline. So we're seeing a lot of people that lived in Lisbon or Porto moving gradually to the interior of the country where they can have a better quality of life. All right. Before moving on, I've, a couple of questions have come in. Um, one question is, what is the difference with Spain? So it's quite straightforward, isn't it, really? Perhaps uh, you can explain that. Uh, and that's uh, from uh, Mohammed in the Middle East. Well, the, the Spanish program is very similar to the Portuguese, but the major difference that I would like to highlight is the time to citizenship. In Portugal, you can obtain citizenship after five years, and in Spain, it takes you 10 years. And also the residency requirements in Spain are a lot harsher than in Portugal. In Portugal, you only need the seven days or the 14 days every two years. It's in Spain, you have to stay a lot longer. So these are the two major difference between Spanish program and the Portuguese program. Mm -hmm. And I believe the, the, the fact that the Portuguese has a lot more success than Spain is uh, due to these two factors. And also the Spanish, today are working a little bit better in terms of their immigration services but before a lot of people would avoid Spain because it was very bureaucratic and people wouldn't know what would happen tomorrow uh, it was not organized at all all right and then uh, another question that came in I think it's fair enough um, and we know um, Portugal is a, a member of the European Union and, and, and has been for uh, a number of years um, mm -hmm. What is the um, the language requirements for GRP uh, uh, residents that are coming into into Portugal um, with a view uh, of settling um, and also obtaining uh, citizenship within five years, as you have uh, already mentioned? Well, basically, Bruno, it's a great question, but. Uh... It's a very basic test. I mean, it's uh, something extremely basic that anyone from China to anywhere else in the world, it's, if you study, uh, if you start studying, you have five years and it's just very, very simple. So anyone can get it. You just need to start from day one, having a look, listening to some maybe movies in Portuguese or subtitles in Portuguese, but it's a very basic test and the majority of the people that took the test uh, have, have passed. So it's not a, a big deal. Uh, it's truly very, very basic. All right, okay. Um, and time to citizenship is, uh, is five years. Has that been tested? Yes, it has been tested. We have... Uh, I mean, there's a lot of people that has, have already reached at the point of the five years and uh, that has, has obtained their citizenship with no problem whatsoever. What is important is for people to, when, when they get to that stage, they need to show a real involvement in the community. And what we suggest they do is that they should start doing that from day one. So becoming a member of a soccer club like Befica, Porto, or Sporting, or a library, or a marina, showing any, a true engagement to Portugal and making part of chambers of commerce between their countries and Portugal. All of these emotional links is very important to show and to determine that the, the, there is really a link to the community. But uh, yes, the, we, we, want, we don't have any problems whatsoever with that as long as uh, the investor shows that he not only has done the Portuguese test, but he is linked to the community in some shape. For example, if he's a golfer, become a golf member in a club from day one, start participating. This is mm -hmm. important, okay? All right, okay, good. I am, I'm conscious of the time and uh, we've got 10 minutes left, but I wanna move on to another poll, uh, to moving towards the third part of this session. Um, and we're asking um, viewers today, what are the three countries 
um, or nationalities uh, that have mostly invested in the Portuguese GRP. Is it China, Brazil, Turkey? China, Brazil, USA? China, South America, Brazil? South Africa. Are, South Africa, maybe one. What are the three countries or nationalities that have mostly invested in the Portuguese GRP? All right, so we're collecting the responses. 67% have voted. In the meantime, Frederico, we had a question coming from India. Um, mm -hmm. And the question is, um, being new uh, to investment migration, representing my company, how can I engage with a developer for a tie-up and clients processing from India. So if one of our viewers is from India, he wants to tie up with a developer uh, and uh, create uh, a working relationship with somebody uh, in, uh, in, in Portugal for doing clients processing uh, of applications, what should they do? Well, they should contact us directly uh, and we'd be very glad to study and to help and to aid. We do have agents all over the world and we're very keen on working with external agents. Uh, so um, please contact me. My email is in our website, which is www.investaurium.com. Uh, or it's Frederico Seixas, like my name, at investaurium.com. And I'll be very glad to help you and to study an agreement, a future agreement uh, between our company and yours. All right, good. So let's mm -hmm. share the results of that. So in, um, you know, 36 percent, uh, two groups there, they leave China, Brazil, USA, China, South Africa, Brazil, and 27 percent of viewers think China, Brazil. Turkey. Um, mm -hmm. Interesting mix there, Frederico. It is, um, it is. Is there an, is there an, a, an outright um, correct answer? There is. The correct answer is the first way, the first one, China, Brazil, Turkey. Uh, so China, number one, Brazil, number two, and Turkey, the third biggest market. Uh, of course, these uh, responses don't surprise me. It's not an easy question. And probably if maybe a year from now, the number two will be correct. And US will pass Turkey. But today it's China, Brazil, and Turkey. So it's not an easy question. So well done, everyone. And South Africa is the, actually the fourth. Uh, so it's a tricky question because it's also a very important market for Portugal. Yeah, they're all very close, aren't they? Um, yes. All right. Uh, Frederico, what, you know, I'm sort of, you know, interested in is what the you know the future holds uh, for investment migration uh, globally, uh, but clearly we're focused on uh, Portugal. Um, what are the main challenges for the Portuguese uh, investment migration pathway um, going into the future? Well, I think that the main challenges today uh, are basically not only to the Portuguese program but to the majority of the programs in Europe and uh, I think this is something that has been discussed in uh, the IMC forum etc and uh, we need to get in some way shape or form the European Commission involved and make them part of, uh, of the solution and not part of the problem uh, there was actually something extremely interesting that was uh, said in uh, the IMC forum, which they gave the example, I believe it was the an ambassador of Switzerland, and he gave the example of Switzerland, and Switzerland has 27 cantons, and uh, every time that there is someone that wants to become a resident or a citizen of Switzerland, the canton has to send this information to all the other members mm -hmm. that have a veto right and they have 
And only after all the members have signed off will this uh, uh, citizen become a, a Swiss citizen. I think that more and more, this is the number one challenge because uh, although countries are sovereigns and uh, they may decide who and who may not become a citizen or resident in their countries, more and more Europe is becoming um, a European state like the USA and uh, we need to listen to them and be careful and we don't want to have a counter power or a law tomorrow that may affect our industry. So I think this is the main exterior challenge the European community. In terms of the interior challenges, uh, I think that the more the Portuguese government understand the, the, the work that we do and where the investments come from and the due diligence and the way the due diligence is done and, uh, and where the investments are being channeled to, uh, they're going to be in favor as they are today and that Portuguese program may survive for many, many years. And uh, like in the US, I like to analyze like the EB5 and the TEA, which is the low employment areas uh, uh, where, where the majority of the EB5s are done with the 50% reduction, is something that can be done tomorrow in Portugal in low income areas, low density areas, uh, in the interior of the region, in the islands of uh, Madeira, in the islands of the Azores. So there's a lot that has to be done. And the impact is this is extreme, it's very, very profound. We're actually, uh, we, uh, there's a study being conducted by a public university in Portugal to measure the impact of this industry in the Portuguese economy. Uh, but to give you an example, one of the projects that we're doing in a village of Alentejo, we're investing 30 plus million. The impact of this to the local economy is outrageous. It's going to be huge. I mean, not only the jobs that it will it, it will bring to the to the village, but also the, the 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 purchasing power of the people that will be staying at these hotels is going to completely change the local economy. Not only the shops that they buy, but they're going to go on tours. They want to visit the Alqueva, which is the biggest lake in Europe. They want to do jeep tours. They want to do wine tasting. They want, I mean, they want to. We're, we're creating a new uh, dynamo for the for the local economy in several different places, and this is something that is extremely important. And I believe that the governments are starting to realize this and seeing how important it is and how good it is to have investors coming into many times very isolated locations in Portugal and investing and they remember that they were talking of uh, individuals that are not high net worth individuals many times but they have money they have investments and when they see opportunities they have the ability to invest and uh, of course we represent or this industry represents a very low percentage when compared to other immigrants that come to Portugal every year and unfortunately they do not bring the same economical value to the economy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me just check if we've got any more questions coming through. Yeah, there's just another question regarding how to contact you. I think you, you are on LinkedIn, aren't you, as well, Frederico? Yes, I am. Right. Okay. And if anybody wants to get in touch with Frederico directly, feel free to contact the IMC Secretariat and we will uh, facilitate the networking. Uh, but alternatively, if you go to the website, www.investmentmigration.org slash members, um, you will see that Investorium are corporate members of the IMC. Uh, and Frederico's contact details, as well as that of his colleagues, uh, feature on the uh, membership directory. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you, the uh, viewers uh, at home, in your offices, uh, enjoyed uh, and found today's session interesting. Uh, as I said, feel free to reach out to Frederico or myself uh, through our respective LinkedIn uh, or write to me directly. Um, we will be back on the 20th of July uh, at 2.30 Central European time for an analysis on the rule of law uh, and the work of the courts in the Caribbean with Jeffrey Dubelet uh, and Keith Isaac, two notable uh, lawyers based in the island of St. Lucia, 
uh, in the Caribbean. Uh, until then, uh, stay safe and thank you once again for joining us. Uh, I will now show you a video of uh, IMC Education and Training. Thank you very much, Frederico, for joining us. Uh, and I thank look you, forward bro. to uh, seeing you very shortly, hopefully in, um, in beautiful Lisbon. Bye You're for now. You're welcome, either Lisbon or Porto. Bye for now. Take care. Introducing the Certification in Investment Migration from the Investment Migration Council, the first structured learning product of its kind globally designed for you. Explore the bite-sized learning pathway of each module on our custom online platform. You can track your progress as you go and learn at a pace that suits you, with an estimated five hours of study time per module. The Certification in Investment Migration contributes to the development of professional competencies and standards for those new to or already working in the industry. So, what are you waiting for? Visit our website to start your learning journey today.